Hey everybody, Rob here from Redwood.js. My mustache and I would like to make a big announcement. As of right now, the latest canary of Redwood supports React server components. That's right, the biggest technological breakthrough since DNS. And you can use it right now with Redwood. Let's check it out. This video is gonna take us through converting a classic GraphQL enabled Redwood app into a React server component app. And this is the app we're gonna show off here called Cambium. It's a really simple little photo editing app. You kind of get a slide, a light table here with some slides. You pick a photo and you get some adjustments you can make. Brightness, contrast, hue and saturation. And you can add a little film grain. You can see the metadata for that image stored with the image when the photo was taken. And then you can take your styled photo, click share, you get a new URL here, and you can share this with others, you get a bigger view of the photo, and then you get a little bit of the metadata down here. And then they can remix this photo. So by clicking this, they can then go and start with your edits and make their own. Before I do that though, let's go over a little review of how data and requests move through a Redwood app. So here's our classic GraphQL app. We've got our browser here. Browser makes a request to a page that goes to the server that's serving the website, right? And that's gonna respond with the JavaScript necessary to get React going. So React's gonna start up and it's gonna see, oh, I have a cell, so I need some data from somewhere. So it's gonna show the loading component. And then in the meantime, it's gonna fire off this GraphQL call and that's gonna go back to the API server and that's gonna invoke the resolver, which is in our services. And then that's gonna be a Prisma call back to the database. So here's a raw database call. That data set's converted to JS, that JS is converted to GraphQL, that's returned to the front end, to the browser. And now React has everything it needs here to now render success. So it plugs that data in, removes loading, renders success. So what does that look like in an RSC world instead? Now we only have one server. There's just the server and it's gonna serve everything. And we'll see here the same request goes out. The server's gonna respond with JavaScript. React is gonna render up to the layout and then it's gonna get to a page and be like, oh, I need the content for this page. And you'll see here it makes a special request, this RWRSC and it has a name of the page it's trying to get data for. That comes into the server, and now the server is gonna start rendering the page, and it's gonna get as far as it can, so it's gonna go down here, and it's gonna say, oh, there's a cell, and now we call these server cells because they're running on the server. It's gonna now request some data, but it can do this directly in the database. It doesn't need to go through GraphQL or anything. Request goes out to the database, comes back, data set again is transformed into JS. That's plugged right into the page, and then RSC does something called this flight format, and it's kind of a mixture of JSX and JSON. And that gets returned to the browser. And then React and the client now knows how to turn that into the actual HTML and DOM updates. So let's take a look at the actual code of the app and see what was involved to switch it over from GraphQL to RSC. Here is the classic version, I'm gonna call it the GraphQL version. And you'll see that right now, looking at the home page, very simple, home page just renders a cell. And then here's the cell that gets all the slides that show up on the first page there. And you'll see we have a query object, and this is our GraphQL query. And then our loading state, empty state, failure state, and finally success. And it just maps through all the photos and renders a slide for each one. So what's involved in turning this into RSC? Well, it's actually not very much at all. So notice this query export here. In RSC, we're exporting something called data, and that's going to be a function. And then whatever you return from here is going to be sent in as a prop to success, just like it is in the classic version. The difference is this code now actually executes on the server. So this can be database calls, and in this case, it's actually a service. So if you look down here, I moved the service from the API directory, normally it would be here in API, I moved it into web. So you go to web, and there's actual services directory here with the photos. And this is just some code that goes through, loops through the files, reads the XF data from the file, and then returns it. And that's it. That's converting a cell into RSC. Now, the only gotcha with this is you can't have state on the server. That's exclusive to the client side. So if you do need state, for example, in this page, let's go back to the classic app. And I'll show you here when you're editing a photo, that's when you're viewing the detail and you're moving the sliders around. That's gonna edit the photo cell. And there's, a, there's several instances of use state here, specifically the adjustments, right? Those sliders that you're moving back and forth. You can't do this on the server side. So what do you do when it comes to an RSC app? So if you look at the same cell over here in RSC, you'll see that we have our data function, but also now instead of rendering anything in success where those use states were, we now render a separate component. So the trick is this can be rendered on the server because it does not use state. Anything that does need state now needs to go into its own component. 
And we've sort of called this the cell success child component, this sort of pattern. So you have your success component, and then you immediately render something else to actually worry about the state. So now if we go into edit photo success, you'll see here, here's all the state and code that was there previously. Like there's the adjustment state. The only difference with this file is it gets this. So this is a special expression that goes at the top. It's just a string, use client. And that tells React, hey, something in here needs to run on the client. So package it up, run it on the client no matter what. So the data is still retrieved on the server, but the actual rendering is all gonna happen here in the client. And that's it, you just have to make sure to put use client on the top. Now, what about all these child components that it uses, right? So this is going to use, you'll see here, I have some actions and controls and metadata. What about those components? Do those all, does everything now need use client? And the answer to that is no. So these guys do not need use client. As soon as you define anything as use client, uh, RSC refers to that as a boundary. So you've defined the client boundary and now any children components of that use client component are automatically rendered on the client as well. And React is just smart and knows how to do that. And that's super flexible because now controls, in theory, I could use in a, in a server component somewhere else and it would render on the server. As long as anything it needs to know about is passed in via props, it's fine. It can run on the server or the client. And React is smart about which place it runs at. This will be tough to read because it's so big here, but I'll put a link to this in the description, but this is a neat little boundary graph showing where the boundary switches between server and client. This makes it much more clear and how components can be shared between the two. So check this out in more detail. Now there are a couple of gotchas with the current RSC implementation. It's effectively read only. So we can't actually post any new data up to the server yet. We're still working on that. It's coming along nicely. So consider this sort of a read only use case right now. The dev server isn't currently working with RSC. So you'll need to build and serve between each step. So anytime you make a code change, you'll need to run yarn redwood build and then yarn redwood serve in order to see it. And there are a few other things to keep in mind like that. I'll have a link to the announcement blog post where we talk about all these various gotchas and a few other small things, as well as a list of everything we're currently working on and hope to have out soon. Again, if you want to try this out, just check out the current canary. There's instructions in that blog post on how to do that. So let's make the web even better with redwood and react server components.